Now we have a frat boy throwing a ping pong ball into a cup. And let's see, we'll draw this one with actual axes y vertical x horizontal. And it looks like the frat boy is throwing from 0.6 meters because, you know, frat boys are tall and everything. So the ping pong ball starts there and throws hard, frat boy, 5 meters per second, but at an unknown angle. Right? We're trying to define, to find the angle that we need to throw at 5 meters per second at some thing. And he's trying to land in a cup um, well, that we know is 1 meter away, right? So here's the cup, and we know it's at 1 meter, and again we know it's 0.2 meters tall, 20 centimeter cup. And the question is simply, what angle should the frat boy throw at? If he insists on throwing 5 meters per second, what angle would be best? Okay, so this problem is a little bit more difficult than the previous one because we don't know the angle. So this one is definitely going to lead to sort of an algebraic mess. So let's say, let's even make that a little rule. In these problems, if speed or angle is left variable, then my advice is to write r, the position vector r. Just because it's a variable, you can still go through and try to just apply your intuition about which equations to use. But we're going to end up with a polynomial and have to find the roots. And to get the right one, it's better to go in a systematic way, such as writing r. So let's write the position of the, um, the, position of the ball here. Let's see. So the x position, we know it has no x initial, if this is the origin and we know it has no x acceleration, so it is really just 5 meters per second cosine theta, t. 5 cosine theta times time, that's the vi t i hat. And now, in the y direction, it does have an offset 0.6 meters. It does have an initial uh, 5 sine theta, initial velocity times t, and of course, in the y, it's accelerating down due to gravity, and that's minus 1 half g, or minus 4.9 t squared. Minus, that's the plus 1 half a t squared, turns into minus 4.9 t squared on the y hat, on the y axis, j hat. All right, so there is the position for all time. So now, remember, you just apply the problem to that expression. The problem says he makes it. It goes into here. So what does that mean? That means at some time it must be it must be at x equals 1, y equals 0.2 at the same time. That's the key. At the same time. It could easily be at x equals 1 at some time and y equals 0.2 at some other time. But if they're at the same time, then it's going to land in the cup. That's really the way we're going to do this. So, what we really want to figure out is, what we really have is two equations and two unknowns. We don't know theta, and we don't know that time, but we have two equations. We know this equals point, we know this equals one meter, and this equals 0.2. So it's really just solving that system of two equations and two unknowns. So let's get started. Five cosine theta, I'll call it th for the hang time, because it is essentially the hang time. Um, five cosine theta hang time equals one meter. That's the x position. And then the other one is simply 0.6 uh, plus 5 sine theta t minus 4.9 t squared equals 0.2 meters. So there you go. Two equations. There's one, there's one, and two unknowns, theta and the hang time, th. How are we going to solve those? Well, typically you stick one into the other. This one looks easy to solve for t, so let's do that. Let's say that the hang time th in this case is 1 over 5 cosine theta. And I'm leaving off all kinds of units. You know, this is meters divided by meters per second, so it is indeed seconds, t is in seconds, etc. Let's see, next we would then plug this t into this expression. So let me uh, see what that's going to look like. I'm going to pull the point 0.2 over, subtract it from the 0.6, I'm going to get 0.4 plus 
and then I'm going to have 5 sine theta divided by 5 cosine theta. 5 sine theta, 1 over 5 cosine theta. The 5's cancel, and sine over cosine becomes tangent theta. So this next term is just tangent theta. There's no th because I've plugged in for th. And then the last term, minus 4.9 t squared. Let's see. So that's going to be minus 4.9. We square this. It becomes 1 over 25 cosine squared theta. So we've got 4.9 over 25. That's about 0.2, a little less than 0.2. It's about 0.196 if you ran it on a calculator over cosine squared theta equals zero. So there's your expression that normally leads to some polynomial and uh, and then you can solve it and find the roots. But this one's a little weird, right? It's not a nice squared, uh, x squared x, x to the zero. It's got a cosine squared here and a tangent here. So what do we do? Well, this gets into, sometimes you solve problems from experience. This is a case where you've got to know which trigonometric identity to use. And the one you want to use this time is 1 over cosine squared theta equals 1 plus tangent squared theta. How did I know to use that? Experience. Um, on an exam, it's unlikely in our class or whatever class you're taking that you would have to just know that, know to apply that just then. Usually, maybe not. Maybe on a homework you'd be required to go figure that out. Or maybe if on a homework you did it once, you should remember, oh, that trick. I use that trick in this kind of problem. And then you would be expected to use it. But anyway, that is what you have to use. Because if you use that, you can see how that's going to help us out here. Um, we're going to apply that here. And we're going to get 0.4. That's going to remain 0.4. That's going to become tangent theta. And this is going to become minus 0.196 uh, uh, times this, so minus 0.196, right, and then minus 0.196 tangent squared uh, theta, minus 0.196 tangent squared theta equals zero. And now you can see that's sort of in the form that you need. Now if you make this, uh, well I'll write it one more time, if this becomes 0.204, and you combine the 0.4 and the 1 point minus 0.196 plus tangent theta uh, minus 0.196 tangent squared theta, then use quadratic equation. Right? You've got A here, A is minus 0.196, B is 1, and C is 0.204. If you do that, you don't get solutions for theta, you get solutions for tangent theta. We're treating tangent theta like x here. So what you get is that tangent theta equals what would be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared plus, I get 1.6 for 4 times this times this. The minus signs cancel, it's negative 1.196, 1 .9, it's minus, and over 2a is minus 0.392. Right? So tangent theta, you get two roots. It can be um, two values that I didn't write down, but they lead to two thetas. So theta you get can be 81.5 degrees and then the other one is minus 57 degrees. And this is interesting that you get two because then you usually have to look at the problem and figure out which one is the actual answer. Sometimes one of them is doesn't make any sense or it's not the answer. In this case they're both the answer. Trajectories can have two answers when you're asked about the angle because if you think about it what did the frat boy do? He threw it really hard. Right? He threw it so hard, if you ran the numbers and you threw it horizontally at 5 meters per second, it would go too far. So you needed to go less far than a horizontal throw. So when you have something horizontal and you throw it and it goes a certain distance, how can you make it go shorter? One way is you can aim it down. Right? So you can see the negative 57 actually represents throwing it down like that to get it into the cup. So that's an answer. Another way you can make it go shorter is to pull it way up and have it go way up here and then fall in. And that's the 81.5. So both answers are actually correct. So here's a case where if you don't know the initial numbers, the algebra gets messy, you might have to use a trig identity from somewhere, pull it from somewhere, and you might even get two answers that are both right.